Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have another episode of Adventures in Surplus. Today we're taking a look at another of these rifles that I got as part of a lot at Rock Island. This is a CE44 uh, German Mauser Car 98K. So what the heck is a CE44? Let's dig into it. When I say CE44, what I'm referring to are the receiver markings here, where there's a manufacturer's code of CE and a date of 44. This is a 1944 production rifle, and CE is the production code for JP Sauer and Son, um, a company that still exists today, or it it has a corporate history that continues today. Um, today it is part of Sig Sauer. At any rate, uh, Sauer and Sohn started producing rifles fairly early. They Their first production code was S147, then it was simplified to just 147. Uh, in 1941 it became CE, and for the first couple of years they used a, a cursive CE that actually looks something like that, before in 1944 they changed to a standard CE. Uh, this is the sort of detail that you will inevitably find yourself in if you start researching Car 98Ks. We have Model 98 on the side rail here, and we have kind of what you would expect for markings. We have a serial number, 4220G, uh, G suffix there. Sauer used all script letters for everything, uh, including those suffixes. This is the last year that Sauer would produce Car 98Ks. As 1944 came to a close, the company was in the process of transitioning uh, into production of MP44 uh, assault rifles. That was something they had actually started all the way back in 43 to try and, and be able to seamlessly transition. Uh, they made a total of about 230,000 Car 98Ks in 1944, so still a substantial number. Uh, but they never did quite get to the full-on Kriegsmodell version, which was the, the final version of the German last-ditch rifles. So what we see here is what some people would call maybe semi-Kriegsmodell, where we have a lot of simplified parts. So the front band here is a stamped component instead of being finely milled, and it's got this kind of raw looking weld on the bottom. It's a piece of stamped sheet metal, bent around in a circle, and then welded together. We still, however, have barrel band or a barrel band spring here that holds these parts, the nose cap and the barrel band, in place. So uh, later on, the true Kriegs models replaced these springs with simple wood screws going into the stock. Similarly, J.P. Sauer never gave up on having bayonet lugs and cleaning rods, which the true Kriegs model rifles got rid of uh, just for reduced cost. We have a stamped barrel band here. One of the cool things about this particular rifle is that it is all matching. And we have a serial number here uh, under the sight, a somewhat crudely stamped one on the sight leaf, and another slightly askew serial number stamped onto the adjustment slider. However, we don't have Waffenamps, uh, military acceptance inspection marks on any of those parts. And that's because as part of the simplification and economization process, Sauer stopped doing a lot of the formal inspections. A lot of these parts were inspected in batches, and the individual parts didn't all get uh, stamps the way they did at the beginning of the war. Now some of the particularly important parts did, of course, and we can there's an interesting bit of detail we can get by looking at some of them. So the side of the receiver here has an Eagle over 280 uh, Waffenamp. That indicates that uh, this receiver was actually manufactured by a company in the Erfurt area. Um, I can't pronounce the full German name, but it's, it's shortened to uh, Feine. Uh, Sauer produced some of their own parts, but they outsourced a lot of them. And receivers are one of the things that they outsourced. I don't believe they ever made their own receivers in-house. So we have the 280 mark that was put on when the receiver was inspected as a bare part. However, we have an Eagle over 37 as a final production acceptance uh, mark. 37 was the code number for the Waffenamp team at the J.P. Sauer factory. So parts that were done there specifically are all going to be marked uh, with the Eagle over 37. If we take a look at the barrel markings, we see a CE in script, uh, which indicates that the barrel was in fact made in-house by Sauer. 
CQ there, which might be CG, poorly stamped. Um, that is simply a, um, a batch of a material batch code. So they had they they went sequentially in order C A C B, and there's no particular meaning to that except that it's an ident it identifies the batch of material. And then we have a pair of Eagle over 37 proof marks, again indicating that the barrel was manufactured in house and then inspected in house. Uh, the other common one you will see would be FXO, um, uh, one of the one of the other companies that Sauer subcontracted parts from. Now I mentioned that this particular rifle was all matching, the bolt handle, the gas shield, the safety, that's really cool. And we see here that the trigger guard is also matching. Uh, at the very end of 1944 Sauer would do a little bit more simplification. Um, they ended their production run with a small number of these where they got rid of the locking screw here. The purpose of this is uh, unless you loosen this screw, you can't loosen this screw. So you don't need instead it's it's an equivalent to something like a lock washer to prevent this screw from coming out. The one problem with this rifle is that magazine floor plate. And again, we're getting into some pretty deep minutia of Mauser production, but this uh, should be a milled floor plate, not a stamped one. You can tell it's stamped from these little indents. It's very light, but right there you can see that this floor plate is stamped BYF, and that is a Mauser made component. Sauer did not subcontract floor plates to Mauser. So the floor plate from this rifle went missing at some point, and someone replaced it with this one. Other than that, the rifle is a really good example of a late production Sauer Car 98K. Uh, we have a stock cartouche here, um, again simplified. This is just an eagle over a big letter H. There should be a small uh, 37 Waffenamp on here as well, uh, but the stock's fairly fairly worn. You can see how the eagle on this this guy is pretty light, uh, and I can't find the the other stamp. It has simply worn off. So this isn't a rifle that is specifically indicative of like the very beginning of production or the very end. This is a rifle from the midpoint, and just this image right here kind of exemplifies that, where you've got a welded band, but you've still got a spring, but you can very clearly see the lathe marks left on the barrel because they weren't taking the time to really finally polish that down anymore, because it didn't really matter, and it was far more important to get as many rifles out the door as possible. Um, if you think about in production of 230,000 rifles over the course of one year in one factory, that's averaging out to more than 500 rifles per day uh, coming out, completed out the uh, out the door of that factory. So that is a, a serious feat of industrial production, and Sauer was just one of the many companies making these uh, for the German military during World War II. German World War II Mauser collecting is, I think the best mixed metaphor I could use here would be something like a minefield of rabbit holes uh, of information to get into. There are a lot of people very interested in these rifles, and that has led to a bunch of scholarship on them. So I would say the one of the basic sorts of books you can get on this is Backbone of the Wehrmacht uh, by Steve uh, Richard Law. Sorry, Richard Law. Um, if you want to get more detailed than that, and in fact the source that I used primarily for this video is Volume 2A of Carabiner 98K by Karam and Steves, uh, Bruce Karam and Michael Steves. So uh, this book I know for sure is still available, you can find it out there, and it is an absolute wealth of information that goes in detail beyond even what I was talking about here today. So if you're interested, there are a couple of resources uh, to, uh, to get you further along. Thanks for watching.